was his reaction? Well, yeah, it wasn't, there wasn't really a reaction. What do you mean? Um, well, we found out a few hours later he decided to um, not go along with the option, as he said, he had the right to pull out, um, which we just couldn't believe because, you know, the word's your word and where's the morals and ethics in doing what he did. Okay, so let me see if I understand. You're saying that after waiting how many months, nine months or something for the rezoning to happen? Well, that was, yeah, the last lot. We'd been told it would be January 2009 uh, and then it took till March 10 to get through. Okay, and when the rezoning does happen and you're all excited and you ring up Steve to tell him the exciting news, you're saying he pulled out of the deal? He yes. wasn't interested? No. And how did you feel then? Well, gut-wrenched, I suppose. Just couldn't believe it, that something that we'd held on to and, yeah, just left me in a... because my contract was payment within seven days of from the council rezoning. From C Corp or yes, Steve Fagan? from C Corp. Well, by this time it was... the contract was in a company name of C Corp. Born man's development. Right. Okay. So that it was it was established in a different company name. Yes, under the under C Corp. Right. Okay. And they was, said that was just to do you know the development because there was four properties involved at that stage. So where did that leave you? Um, devastated because my loan was to be paid out within seven days, and. I will say Oceanic were very good in the fact that they did wait, um, but they did throw me into court then um, and gave me 100 days to have the place sold so, how, so they could okay, get their money back. Okay, so you borrowed $290,000 and it was due to be paid seven days after the rezoning of the land because that was the arrangement you had with Steve Fagan That's right. from C Corp. And then your loan fell due. What amount was due at By that By this stage? time it had blown out to 1.1 million, um, which was frightening in itself. But we ended up, they um, took me to court to repossess the property to get their money. And we did come to an agreement of 100 days to sell it. And a total of 865,000 was the best I could get with no extra onto that. Okay, so the debt originally was 290000 With interest, it became $1.1 million, but you renegotiated the debt down to $865,000. That's right. And you were given 100 days to settle to sell the property. Yes. Were you able to sell that property in that time? No, we went to auction and we didn't get a bid. So where were you at at that stage? Just emotionally, just, I guess, financially? Just, yeah. Couldn't. That's why I said, it, if people need to know this so it doesn't happen to them because I wouldn't wish it on anyone what, what I went through and what I'm still going through. Okay. So in effect, you had a debt of 500000 on the property and the debt with Oceanic was reduced to 865000 um, What's the maths? It's about $1.4 million. What did the property actually sell for? $1.3 1.3 million dollars which means you lost the property and you walked away with a debt and no money at all that's right so did you have any other properties that you could move into no no nothing so I'm just um, yeah living with a daughter at the moment so you're homeless but in effect yes because they are moving on shortly so I don't know what I'm going to do. Your daughter's moving on? Mm. Okay. During this time, did you have any other contact after that phone call with Steve Fagan from C Corp? Yes, I did. Um, I think it was July. He ended up going to Sydney to see Steve and Carly for a meeting. Mm -hmm. And... 
my brother-in-law came with me and we had a meeting in Sydney but um, Carly was in her office because they're all glass offices there but she didn't even come across and say hello or how are you and it was a pretty traumatic meeting. Um, they asked to tape it. To tape your meeting? Yes. Who and asked to tape it? Steve Fagan. Right. And we said we would give permission for it to be taped if we got a copy of the tape. Mm -hmm. At the end of the meeting, we asked for a copy and they said it would have to be typed up. Um, and it's now, that was July and it's now December and we still haven't got a copy. Okay, so you flew down for a meeting with Carly Crutchfield and Steve Fagan. Carly yes, Crutchfield was, right. and Carly Crutchfield was sitting in her office, you could see her, she could see you, but she did not make her way over to join you in the meeting? No, no, she did um, ring me the next day and say she had back-to-back -back meetings, but um, they must have been a bit invisible because there was one guy who came in for a short time, um, but that was it. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying not to get caught up, but this is a devastating, devastating story and more, even more devastating knowing how true it all is. Um, and where to from there after that? Did you have any sort of communication? You said Carly actually rang you up. What was the concept? She just said that if there was any way they could help me, they would do it. Um, mm -hmm. They would find a way, but I never ever heard from them or anything. Okay. I was just left to sink. Okay. In other words, to lose everything that you owned and had worked for all your life? Yeah, and we did. We worked seven days a week. Um, and, yeah, a day off was a luxury. Yeah. I understand you've explained to me and to others that you've been scared of speaking out. You've said that you've been threatened by Carly and received defamation letters from her lawyers threatening you against speaking out. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, it is true. Um, I, and that is one of the reasons why we went to Sydney tours from the first one because I had no idea what they were talking about. So Lorraine, tell us a bit about what your life is like now. We started off knowing that you had a lovely property, you had a flower farm, you had a property that you built with your husband, um, he passed away, you've gone through so much trauma, you've now lost that property. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I have. What is your life like now? Well, when you're at the bottom, there's only one way to go and that's up, but it's really hard to, to even make the effort to try and, and do it. I just don't know how to get back on my feet or where to go and what to do. I just, just can't, can't, yeah. can't do it. Yeah. So I guess um, when you saw Carly Crutchfield on Secret Millionaire, how did you feel? Giving away money and, you know, just the program portrayed her as a very caring person. What's, how would you feel? Well, I can't say I've noticed that because I believed her that she would help in any way she could. Um, but no, and then when you see her with her shopping bags and her 450 pairs of shoes and the dog trod on mine this morning and broke mine, so. <laughs> It hits home a bit. Yeah. Well, Lorraine, sounds like you've been through a second very traumatic experience. Looking back, is there any thoughts or words of wisdom that you could share with others? I just don't want this to happen to anyone else. So I want people to be very, very careful. I'm 63 and just don't know how to start again. And I trusted them. I believed them. Um, I thought their morals were good, their ethics, and they could just cut me dead and walk away and I think, and just leave me sinking. And I know some of it wasn't their fault, but they had promised, they shook hands, they took us out for dinner, they did everything 
that they were going ahead. There was never any talk of that they were going to pull out and just leave me. Um, and they did the same with my friends. And if this can stop someone else doing the same thing, just don't believe all what they tell you. Um, I, I just don't know how else to say it, really, apart from that. Okay, thank you for your courage and for your thoughts and words okay. of wisdom.